Furthermore, he leaves a large percentage of alternative history research in his pursuit to debunk Tartaria, or as he puts it, Tartaria de Linda Est. This phrase means, Tartaria must be destroyed. Destroy! 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 Me and you, almost a year ago now, we're all going to the World's Fair. We released that on 9-11, September the 11th. And in that original video that we released a year ago, we talk about how there was a complete lack of scrutiny, a lack of resistance or pushback from outside sources when it comes to Tartaria. You know, that was being allowed to grow unchallenged you know, via platforms like YouTube and especially TikTok. No scrutiny, even though many of the Tartarian channels by that point, you know, they were huge. They had huge audiences. And this was the first time I've ever seen any real scrutiny and what felt like a, a genuine scrutiny aimed at this hypothesis. So I think my initial reaction was like, whoa, okay, what? And then what sort of occurred after was, was a, a back and forth, a kind of a beef, you know, if you want to call it that, but a very lengthy one which made me think that mm, this isn't... At first, I was quite sceptical, like, oh, here we go. The Tartars have sorted them out a little deal where, you know, they kind of have some fake scrutiny. But this this took hours of Law Lodge's time and mine and Val's time. I've only really just recently caught up on the whole thing, you know, because um, Law Lodge was doing those Twitch streams and whatnot. So I think that was my initial reaction was actually like, oh, wow, okay, this is actually happening. What we've been talking about for so long that when this goes higher and higher, hits the mainstream, it's going to get destroyed. It's begun. I mean, I feel like it still hasn't hit the mainstream yet, right? I mean, Lore Lodge is, as he was saying, he's a channel the size of Mind Unveiled, considered it um, not punching down or up, but punching in front of his face. Simon Dan, who is a bigger channel, he has scrutinized Tartaria in the past. But YouTube's algorithm does not promote his work when searching the keyword Tartaria on their platform. No, that's actually a really good point. Yeah. And I, th I think actually I'll clarify on that or I'll sort of take it back. Law Lodge isn't mainstream. He's got a very big following. But like you said, mine and Vowed and him are kind of on the same level in terms of sub count. And there are Tartaria channels with bigger sub counts as well than Law Lodge. So he, yeah, he's on equal footing and he does event, he sort of branches into conspiracy and stuff. And because I've only discovered him through this beef, you know, I've, I've gone back and had a little look at his videos. So he, yeah, it's fair to say that he's not completely mainstream, but he is a Freemason, which he openly speaks about. And um, I was talking to someone, a friend, and they said, yeah, but he's a Freemason. How can you trust him? So that was another really interesting thing about this exchange was the comments on both of their videos and the amount of sort of nasty hate that was directed towards Law Lodge, most of which being, you know, he's a Freemason, you can't trust him, or, you know, he's like a, a Jew-loving, crypto-Jew, you know, like an agent or whatever. So the interesting thing about this, of, of the Tartars and that camp and this friend of mine saying, yeah, but he's a Freemason, you can't trust him, is that... That immediately puts the the Tartar advocates and the, all the supporters in a very tricky position. And it goes back to what we've been screaming about for the last year, which is its major weakness of cherry picking. Because when you look at some of the, the historical figures that the, the Tartaria advocates draw upon to support their arguments, Godfrey Higgins is one of them. And he wrote this book, um, Anacalypsis, here. Jared Booster, so he's a huge Tartar channel. He's got 80,000 subs. This video had you know, nearly 300,000 views. And it's excerpts from Higgins' book. And it's in support of this hypothesis. But when you look into him, according to Ross Nichols, Higgins was also a chosen chief of the Order of Druids. Higgins was a claim member of the Druid Order, an ancient Druid Order that predates the Golden Dawn. And the founding members of the Golden Dawn were Freemasons. And everyone knows its most famous member, Alistair Crowley, you know, the, the English uh, occultist. 
So Higgins was potentially in the same order where Crowley practiced ceremonial magic. And then if you look into the, the category of Freemasons of the Premier Grand Lodge of England, there's Higgins. So Higgins was a Freemason. And the Tartars use these historical figures to support their argument. And he definitely was a Freemason. You know, if you go over here, scroll down, it said, you know, almost as soon as he had become a Master Mason in Hull, Higgins joined the prestigious Prince of Wales Lodge. Definitely a Freemason. Then we come to Fomenko, which is, again, a massive resource for the Tartars and the Tartarian hypothesis. The Tartarian narrative began with Anatoly Fomenko, but Fomenko's evidences are so comical, I was shocked that people followed him. Fomenko is wrong. There's no missing centuries. Now, this is really interesting because we spoke about this before in We're All Going to the World's Fair last year. and. It says that much of his uh, inspiration was based on the works of Russian Soviet writer Nikolai Morozov. Now, I had a moment, that Mandela effect moment, thinking, I'm sure that said Freemason last time we spoke about it. But I've gone through the wiki and I couldn't find when it was edited, if it was edited. So then I went and found our video. And here it is, Anatoly Fomenko. Based on the works of Russian Soviet writer and Freemason Nikolai Alexandrovich Morozov. So the Freemason's been removed on the sly. And I thought, well, why is that then? So I've done some digging and I thought, well, maybe he isn't a Freemason. But then there's this website, the Grand Lodge of British Columbia and Yukon. And it talks about of the Grand Orient of France in Russia and Russia. And if you scroll down, keep scrolling. N A, so Nikolai Alexandrovich Morozov, St. Petersburg Dawn, Grand Orient of Russia's people. So he was a Freemason. So they've removed that for some reason. Someone's removed it. But that's again another example of the Tartaria advocates drawing upon a Freemason. And then we get to uh, Jean Ardois, who again said that, you know, Rome was fake and was an inspiration for Fomenko. And again, people use him to support. And he was a Jesuit. But I think what that kind of shows is, is that it, it's a tricky position because you end up cherry picking. So it's like, well, either the Freemasons are really bad and they're lying to us. And Law Lodge is an agent. And he's come through to pop the Tartaria hypothesis send it to you know back to where it came from and control it but then at the same time the tartarian hypothesis is born out of the work of freemasons so we're in a tricky position so and the reason i bring that up is because i get called a freemason i've been called ai i get called everything i don't think there's anything i haven't been called yet but no one you know deals with my argument or addresses the argument Maybe a couple of people have tried to do that, but the majority don't. And I think that's what's so important here is that it doesn't matter if Law Lodge is a Freemason. Do you know what I mean? Because he could also not be a Freemason and still have an agenda. It doesn't matter. All that matters is his argument. If you play the Freemason card, you lose all your key players in your hypothesis. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who anybody is. So Law Lodge being a Freemason at this point, really means nothing. From what I've heard and what I've seen of it, he's part of a club and he's probably got a few connections, but I don't, I don't personally, I don't think that he's in on anything. I think this guy just really likes history. What do you reckon? Well, I reckon Jeffrey Higgins isn't going to be listed in the Golden Dawn on Wikipedia here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, Higgins is going to, they're going to scrub Higgins. <laughs> You've let the gumshoes know where they need to go target now to fix up the, the Wikipedia pages. But yeah, same deal for me. I've been called a Freemason many a times. My favorite character to call as Freemasons is Streets of Tartaria. In this comment, he claims to feel sorry for us, and I quote, It seems their local Freemason leaders set them straight, and they had to turn on the community or something like that. His closing statement how does it feel to have got used just now, clown emoji? 
These are the two most recent videos Streets of Tartaria has released. This one titled, New Photo of Joseph Smith Unearthed Fulfills Prophecy. In this video, Streets preaches Joseph Smith Jr., who is the founder of Mormonism, is the greatest and most precise prophet of all time. According to the Mormonism and Freemasonry Wikipedia page, the relationship between Mormonism and Freemasonry began early in the life of Joseph Smith, founder of the Latter-day Saints movement. Smith and several prominent Latter-day Saints had become Freemasons and founded a Masonic Lodge in Novu, Illinois on March 15, 1842. The greatest and most accurate prophet of all time, according to Streets of Tartaria, was a Freemason. Streets of Tartaria also correlates the idea Ewar and Wood and Nichols work for the same organization as his most trusted prophet. Circling back to your point, you are about whether it should matter to the Tartaria advocates if Lore Lodge is a Freemason. The simple answer here is no, otherwise you're dealing with hypocrisy. Moving on, I would say the most undisputed argument we've made is the YouTube algorithm and searching up Tartaria keywords. For this example, we'll simply search Tartaria. Look how it's changed. I don't see any John Levy. I don't see... Well, the key players have changed, but look, I mean, you type this in and you get this guy, Lucius Aurelian, all over the place. And Paul Cook. You're right, it's not being censored. You scroll all the way down, you get Law Lodge here, doesn't come back. Mine and Vowed, Rad His it just there's no there's no resistance to it. It's not being buried. But what if we type in Law Lodge? <laughs> Where's his Tartaria video? Where is it? There it is, all the way down here. And if you look at this, so he's got on his Tartaria videos, he's got this one, 97K views. This one, 160,000 views. So let's look at Mind Unveiled. 87K, 81K, 98K, 209... 289k 224k see he almost does better than law lodge in a way so i i don't think we can play the whole he's a freemason this is controlled because we're not seeing algorithm promote anything to do with pushback we're not seeing the numbers being pushed out to a really wide audience the tartarian hypothesis relies on the work of freemasons to make its own support its own claims and arguments so i think you have to take all of that away and you just have to deal with the argument itself. And again, as well, just to talk about um, Law Lodge, you know, he got censored, I think. I, I saw that in a community post that the, the subreddit, the Tartaria, Tartaria subreddit, have banned him. So that's, again, that's also really interesting because that's kind of what happens when they meet end game in an argument. Because we made a really good video, and I think it's really good, which was Tartaria Unveiled Cherry Picking. And it was about the key argument in which th they all say that the construction photographs must be fake. But in doing that, when they make that argument, you know, they're then using photographs of World's Fairs that no longer exist and just assuming that they're real. This kind of cherry picking that's at the heart of that argument, of the, the fake photographic argument. And in the sense that, you know, if you are going to make that ca that claim that all, photo uh, all construction photographs are fake, then that negates all photographs just by logic. And that was a really good video. And they striked us. The Tartars striked that video on my channel and got it removed. And it came from another channel that was in it who had spent a good year re-uploading my work before my pivot. And I never striked him for doing that. I never gave him permission to do that either. And he striked me because me and you made a good argument. Well, an autodidactic wasn't even in that video until the very last, like, 30 seconds. It fell within fair use. We were not monetizing that video. We weren't making money. So do you believe that autodidactic actually struck it himself? Or would you suspect that? Mine Unveiled didn't want to take the credit for striking the video and had one of the cronies take the hit for him. 
I mean, I don't know. The only thing that was weird about it, the video had been up like months before that came. So, and it it came at kind of like when our interactions with them were at like kind of boiling point. And I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. That It's just getting a bit too much. And yeah, so I don't know who did it. Perhaps, perhaps not. Um, but it's just another example of when it really comes down to it, from that camp, it's always a sensor in. And yeah, there is something to that. If you have to do that, then, you know, it kind of speaks volumes. Another thing actually that's worth saying, and I suppose this is, again is like a reflection like a year later after we, we made our videos. But um, one thing that's come out of the Law Lodge uh, drama is he got another Hidden History channel on to speak on a live called Zertus. And the one thing I noticed, and I suppose this is where me and you probably now need to correct it, is that there does seem to be a portion of content creators that are looking into things like Tartary and that side of the world and looking at it in a bit more of a sensible way. I suppose you could probably call them like the school of like Fomenko. Like they have a different approach. It's not actually the the Tartaria that we've been talking about. Theirs is like a different thing. So I suppose that one year later, I suppose it's worth saying that it does seem like it's more complex now and that content creators have moved on and are doing different things with it. And it's not that that same hypothesis of like, we couldn't build this. I did watch some of that Lore Lodge Zertus video and the comments were hilarious because, yeah, I, I kind of felt the same with what was being presented there. It was just kind of hard to follow a lot of just jumping from one topic to the next. And you're right. It didn't cover any of what we know as kind of the core elements of what Tartaria was, which is mud flood, the Antiquitech, free energy. Oh, we've got your ass. We've got your ass now. Now, this is what it looked like after the last reset. So after the fall, of the Tartarian Empire. There was a lot of Tartarian tech just lying about. And the settlers, which you know as the founders, moved in and salvaged what they could. My first kind of thought when I had watched that and I'd said to you, I was like, I think this is a coup. Like it's a coup of Tartaria. And I'm not accusing Zerdas of, of being a part of anything. I mean, he openly admits that he worked for CNN. He worked for NASA. And, you know, that's all great and fine. You know, I work in the film and television industry and people think that, that that's pretty sketchy. Yeah, it just seemed like all of Tartaria's talking points were being swapped over for whatever Zerdis was presenting, which was just like all his understanding of history. And then Lore Lodge and him could kind of geek out a little bit with that. So, yeah, I was just kind of confused and I didn't finish that video what the real kind of takeaway from it was. I guess I suppose it's like, it, it's that word, isn't it? Tartaria, Tartaria, and how that, the main hypothesis of we couldn't do this, there was advanced civilization, one world civilization, antiquitech, all this stuff. It kind of tarnishes anybody actually looking into history with maybe like a more serious lens or like a, an attempt to do something serious and take history seriously and, and try and look for the flaws and the anomalies and the absences. I suppose if, you know, I, I've promoted the hypothesis, so I can kind of say this, but now if someone accused me of being a, a Tartarian or whatever, I would probably be like, like, no, 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 no. Like we're not all the same. This is what I think. These are the points I've made. I'm different. So I suppose there would be a natural drive to do that. It's just, that I was not familiar with Zertus's stuff. But it is different from the classic, you know, the classical Tartaria hypothesis, as is the stuff that Luke does. They're kind of of that school of Fomenko, or they adopt a kind of Fomenko approach. You know, it, their work, it doesn't contain none of the wild, fantastical claims of the classical Tartarian hypothesis. They're completely different. Well, from what I can gather now, anyway, because I've only really looked at Zertus's stuff since that conversation. And I guess it's another example how that label, Tartaria, Tartaria, 
Tartaria, however you pronounce it, you know, it's now damaging their work and anybody else's work, you know, when looking into hidden history, because they are different things. So that is definitely one of the stronger changes we've seen one year on. You know, some channels have gone in different directions. Although actually, it does seem like Zertus has always been on that kind of conservative Fomenko approach. I don't think he's actually ever gone full psycho with it. But then at the same time, many channels haven't gone in different directions. You know what I mean? Loads of them have actually doubled down. But I, what I did want to talk about is that Law Lodge saying about the, the anti-Semitic claims to Mind and Val's Irish argument. He asked the Reddit community who to, you know, who's got like the, the best Tartaria stuff. And they recommended Mind and Val. But that Irish element to Tartaria isn't actually part of the central hypothesis. It's more Mind and Val's kind of specific flavor of it or whatever and um so i got in touch with him to say that that you know that's not actually the hypothesis and what i will say i don't think that mine unvowed are anti-semitic in terms of their channel i don't know them but with law lodge's definition of it because he 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 did a twitch like response and he spoke about it there and he he said that he wasn't he's not calling mine unvowed like neo-nazis but he's saying that in denying the Jews their history and identity and reallocating it to another people, that is mind unveiled being anti-Semitic. So I think by that definition, then yeah, fine. I thought it was almost a shame that for Tartaria, he picked mind unveiled because a lot of it got lost in that Irish stuff. But if we take that definition of anti-Semitism, of you know, denying a people their history and identity and reallocating it to another people, then Tartaria as a hypothesis above anti-Semitism, above everything else, is anti-American. Because that's the central argument, is that our ancestors didn't build this stuff. Are we supposed to just accept that they built thousands of these buildings? starting in the 1880s to the early 1900s. Where did they get all this money? We couldn't do that today. Here's a visual example of Dubai's transformation within three decades. Where they got the money from was oil and natural gases. According to Mine Unveiled, this is impossible because we can't do this today. Yet, we somehow managed to do it in the middle of a desert? I mean, how many times have I told you that these men with the horse and wagon did not build these structures and this is not their technology. It's a complete denial of their history. It's a complete denial of their achievements, their hard work, their labor. So I think first and foremost, by that definition, it's anti-American, but then it's also anti-European. And it's also, when you say a cathedral is an energy generator, and you dislocate it from Christianity, it's anti-Christian. The thing with the Tartarian hypothesis is that it's completely democratic in the way it treats everybody. It basically cancels everyone. I think with Law Lodge, the, the anti-Semitism was almost like a justification for him to be like, right, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go easy on this guy. I think that's kind of what he was saying because. From what I kind of get, the vibe I get from Law Lodge is that this is a guy that really cares about history and cares about being a historian and has a love for it. So, you know, wanted to sort of protect it and was kind of using that as a justification to go in hard. When really, when you step back and look at the hypothesis, it's anti-everything. And that's why me and you compared it to the left a year ago, because it just cancels so radically without giving a fuck it don't care it's like uh uh like, no you didn't build that no 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 it was these people or it was those aliens or whatever you know what i mean that's what it does well i've read our comments and when it comes to you and the jews according to these comments you are never learned about the jews i think just sometimes when you're talking about telluric currents you need to just stop and talk about the jews 
<laughs> I don't think you can talk about this anti-Semitism thing. I need to say that the the Jews are stealing all the currents and keeping them for themselves. Yeah, just anytime you're starting to get to that point where it's getting really good, just hit the brakes and just talk about how <laughs> Jews are in control of everything. It's such a funny criticism that you get in the comments, and you know where this is coming from. And it's what's really interesting is that none of the Tartars, none of those content creators are anti-Semitic. They aren't. They can't be because their livelihood depends on them not being. Because if you start doing shit like that, you get booted off the platform and demonetized. There's no way any of those people are going to be doing any shit like that. But their stuff is very anti-American. It's very anti-Europe, European. It's anti-Native American. It's anti-African. It's anti-everything. The funny thing is as well, <laughs> is that if did you look at Mind on Val's comments? on his response video, did you see the amount of anti-Semitism in the comments and over at Law Lodge's comments? And I don't know where that's come from, because my impression of this community and these Tartars is not one of anti-Semites. I've never really got that feeling from that. And you know, with the Flat Earth community as well, a lot of those content creators, some of them are Jewish. So I don't really get that vibe from the community. Oh, I mean, maybe. Do you? I don't know. I have in small doses, like when I first pivoted, you know, I was being called a bagel eating Jew. There was one guy who I really respected and I had had on my channel and he had just one day DM me just accusing me of being a Jew and just throwing insults around. And then when I didn't respond well to it, they were like, ha, oh, well, that's all I needed. Your response, let me know. And it's like, no, everyone who I meet on the internet is on a one strike policy. If I think you're cool and we're buddy buddies and all of a sudden I wake up to insults and accusations, we're done. I've definitely seen my fair share of anti-Semitism. And I actually defended the Tartaria group when that um, Bloomberg article came out because I made reference to the author tying it to anti-Semitism. And I was like, that's not cool. Is the majority of the group anti-Semitic? No. But I would never, ever again defend that group as being anti-Semitic because those elements are there. But the thing is, it's so funny because these comments in, in that Law Lodge beef, it's like when I think of an anti, someone that's anti-Semitic, I think of like a right wing, like real nationalist type. Tartaria is bullshit leftist extremism like cancelling everything it can replacing people moving people switching people opening up like the free energy the wef free energy do you know what i mean and the globalism in its in its classical like rendition of the hypothesis in its canon hypothesis that's what it is but yeah do you know what i mean i don't get a vibe that there's anything there that would draw right wing extremists, nationalists, anti-Semites, whatever you call it, towards the Tartarian hypothesis. There's nothing there for them. They would look at this and be like, this is anti-American, or this is anti-European, I'm out. When you backtrack into the conspiracy movement, you are always going to have that the Jews control the world. You know, the Jews control Hollywood. Well, duh, because they created it. So I don't know why everyone's acting shocked about that. It's like, oh man, a black store owner runs this place. Yeah, because they started it. But it all is just funneling down to those next levels of well, where's the whole conspiracy movement going. So all those offshoots are entangled and, and tied up, I feel like in that that conspiracy movement, and wherever it's going to go post Tartaria, whether it is all just leaning into simulation theory, you're still going to have those individuals coming through that are like, well, the Jews control everything, blame the Jews. And that's interesting that you mentioned simulation theory because we've seen the Tartaria community and the Flat Earth community align and unite with Archaics's vision. That's why these alternate, really weird, bogus theories become so popularized and so many people fall for them. Tartaria, intriguing how this topic has taken on a life that transcends any verifiable facts. Science fiction is not new. Hi. Sure. Right, cool. Flat yeah. phones to the flat British pigs. It's going down. Day I'm going Johnny, Johnny here, bro. Flat dubs. And Jason Archaix. So, oh, and Maxage. Imba Productions. Filming the next Tatarian movie. Epicness.
And Archaics is a simulationist. So, you know, it's very good for the Tartars as, <laughs> as they kind of dry up to align with Archaics because to bolster their relevance because Archaics is, you know, he's trendy, he's on the rise and he's, he seems quite controversial. I don't know his work that well. I've dipped in and out a little bit. You know, he releases a lot. So there's a lot there, but it, it seems like, yeah, he's up, he's up and coming and he's controversial. And in a way, I, I almost don't think it's a good idea for Archaics to align with the Tartars if he's trying to grow. You know, it might be a quick win, but the Tartaria no longer has a, that sense of longevity about it. In my mind, anyway, it kind of feels like its days are numbered. When you can tie a conspiracy theory or any conspiracy theories to this, you know, it's the Jews, you've just set them up. And it's easy to chop them down. And I suppose, in a way, that was my problem with Law Lodge's criticism of Tartaria as anti Semitic because it's not. And it almost makes it look like it's just falsely trying to discredit that. And I don't think he, he did that with an agenda in mind. I think, like I said, I think he was just trying to justify why he wanted to go in so hard. You know, Mind Unveiled's Irish argument, which isn't even Mind Unveiled's argument, it's come from some older books, you know, that you could say is anti-Semitic, but only in the same way that you can say that me saying a cathedral is an energy generator and taking it away from Christianity is anti-Christian. With Lore Lodge, he was really going into Mind Unveiled sources and pulling out information that was left out, which is not a surprise to you and me, because again, we have that cherry picking video that we've done. Prime example is how Mind Unveiled highlighted LeGray, a photographer, and then just went ahead and made it seem like every single photographer at that time could take a photo and the sensitive dyes could pick up the skies. But then once we had that keyword LeGray and you and I researched him, there was just a whole field of worthwhile information mind unveiled, skipped over, ignored in favor of the theory that was being presented. So when Lore Lodge was breaking down mind unveiled sources, and I'm not sure, did mind unveiled come back around and reopen up those topics and say, well, yeah, you looked into this and here's further explanation of what I was getting at. Because I felt like that wasn't the case. It was just, hey, Aiden made this response. I'm now going to talk about all this stuff that's unrelated to how he broke down my information. And that's kind of one of the factors that drove Aiden crazy, because in that was just kind of like manipulating to Mind Unveiled's audience who Lore Lodge was as a channel, and then just going off topic. Yeah, I don't know. I'm... We're... I think may, maybe there'll be a response coming because there hasn't been a, another one from uh, Mind Unveiled yet. So maybe it's, they haven't done it yet. But yeah, that that was really impressive, actually, the way that he like literally so diligent as well, like went through everything, didn't he, and went to the sources. But then not only that, I kind of learned some stuff as well because when he got to those sources, so it'd be like, a, like 19th century um, books written on like the Irish or whatever, he was able to put that into context and, you know, he said something that is kind of like common sense, but you don't really think about it as much in the sense that this stuff is dated and that the research has moved on and it belongs in a certain context. But now the research has moved and we know that's not correct. Or he was able to sort of point out that how these sort of historical texts, some of these people writing it weren't actually qualified to even be talking about the subject but they belong to a different sort of class of writing and not considered academic. So I thought that was actually quite impressive to see that because that takes a lot of skill and patience and time to be able to go and do that and do it live as well, which was, I couldn't do that. Do you know what I mean? I, I think I'd, I wouldn't be able to organise my brain as much to be able to do that live to an audience uh, in three sessions consecutively. So that was, that's a challenge to rise to. Lore Lodge was discussing about archaeology and anthropology. And when you do look at the Tartaria subject, having gone on for a couple of years now, it is missing still to this day that element. I would love to know what a daily life of a Tartarian would have been like. The average day in the life of a Tartarian is just 
breathing that sweet, sweet air, man, that feeds them and nourishes them. The breatharians, huh? Yeah, but you're right. No, there's not one element of it really that works. It just doesn't work. And yeah, and and the thing that the thing that's annoying about it is, and this is where it's unfair. It is unfair. And Static in the Attic the other day posted a video saying it's unfair that his channel shadow banned, and that's because he criticised Tartaria. I also saw recently that um, Law Lodge got demonetized on a video about child trafficking. You know, so he's being censored by YouTube just in general. So, I, you know, I don't see any of the big Tartaria channels being demonetized or causing, you know, any kind of controversy at all. I've definitely felt those effects. I've been, you know, striked by these people and stuff like that. And that there are people in the community now that have kind of distanced themselves from that original hypothesis and are doing better work. But still, it's only the ones that promote the classical argument, that tired bullshit that's been debunked and put to bed now for a long time. They're the only ones that do well on YouTube, on the platform. And it is unfair because there's some actual good stuff going on lower down in the ground and it's just not getting shared out. So this thing is still being promoted by the algorithm and that is just a red flag for me. You know, what what is the end game for it? It's going to have to like contribute towards some kind of like culture war or something, isn't it? In the end. I believe our hypothesis from we're all going to the world's fair still has merit, still stands it seems like it is a controlled agenda that fits well with the paradigm shift that's taking place out east with Russia and China. And it's just doing a great job, as you pointed out, of getting people with alternative thinking capabilities who have disconnected from the untrustworthy mainstream media to now just start erasing their own history without having to send in soldiers, without having to, to do anything, they're doing it themselves. And this concept of a foreign government implementing psychological warfare through the use of the World Wide Web to achieve a desired outcome seems less far-fetched than a worldwide civilization that went missing during the mud flood, which we have no record of. With leftist ideals falling in line with communism, and YouTube being a leftist-controlled platform, it explains why after six years, YouTube has allowed this conspiracy to be promoted by their algorithms. You are being lied to about your reality. And guess what? These people think we're too dumb to figure it out. But when I say I got your ass, oh, I've got your ass. So to wrap things up, I would like to tell a personal story, which is my one and only interaction with Mind Unveiled. Now, at the time, Mind Unveiled had done a video on the Vanderbilt Mansion. I think it was like six hours long or something like that. And I personally don't have time to sit through anything with that kind of a runtime. So I did not watch it. But he did make a community post about that Vanderbilt Mansion video. And he also made reference to this growing anti-Tartaria movement. Now, I know he was talking about me in that because at the time, the only outspoken people against Tartaria was myself. You had just pivoted, static in the attic. And I don't think yet at the time, Wise Up was as vocal about his thoughts and feelings regarding the Tartaria research subject as he ended up becoming. So I left a comment on Mind Unveiled's post suggesting that he goes and visits these places for himself because there's a good chance he's getting the information wrong. And the reason I say this is because he had created another post sharing out a video from a channel, Old World Exploration. And in this video, Old World Exploration is doing a online tour of the Marble House, which is a Newport, Rhode Island, Gilded Age mansion, which I've been to. When I was on the second floor exiting Alva's bathroom, the secrets of the house revealed themselves. The look is cheated. The columns are marble, the trim is marble, but many of the walls are actually painted to resemble the look of marble. And here is what Old World Exploration had to say about the Marble House. We have a curved marble tile wall. 
you know, if you're quickly buying and easily buying the uh, mainstream story, you think I'm a, I, I'm a fool for taking this uh, path, suggesting these things, I want you to go down to your local um, tile shop, tile installers, um, providers, and I want you to show them this and tell them that you want this in your bathroom. You want a curved tile wall. The inside curved, the outside curved. Well, Mind Unveiled ends up responding to my comment, and he informs me that he did actually visit the Vanderbilt Mansion in that six-hour-long video. So I actually felt like I was in the wrong with my comment. I deleted my comment, and I reached out to Mind Unveiled via Instagram. And I apologized for my reactions. You know, I said I was in the wrong. And we kind of started a back and forth. And then you and I had our very first chat together. And I'd never spoken with you before. It's going to be the first time. And mine unveiled in our DMs had given me criticism towards us, which I told mine unveiled. I'm going to share that criticism with you are in this video that we're planning. And you can see we're going to talk about it there. And he's like, great, I'll respond. In that video, which is no longer up because I don't have the Wooden Nichols channel, Mind Unveiled ends up leaving a whole entire novel of comments, just never ending. And what he's doing, or sorry, what they are doing, is they're taking my comments from the direct messages, reframing it the way that they want it spun in a narrative, and then putting it in my comments. An example claiming that I couldn't take criticism and I was going to delete my channel all sorts of like backhanded insults while trying to like compliment me at the same time. It was a really weird process to sit and watch. And then the craziest thing was he was saying that the reason you and I made that video was because of him. It wasn't that I was just highlighting some criticism. It was that the whole entire video, the reason you and I, you are and Wooden Nichols were getting together was because of Mind Unveiled. And I was like, this is crazy. And even in our DMs, Mind Unveiled is going on about how he thinks I'm not spiritually mature. And yet two seconds later is going and taking all this personal information that I thought was private, spinning it and manipulating it in their own words and then throwing it back in the comments. So I never responded to Mind Unveiled in any of those comments. I stopped speaking with them immediately in the direct messages. And the whole entire time, he's telling me that Ewar is a shill. Don't trust Ewar. But my one and only interaction with Mind Unveiled was you cannot trust Mind Unveiled. So to speed that up to the Lore Lodge incident, where Lore Lodge, I would say, messed up is he was drinking and live streamed his response to watching Mind Unveiled respond to his video. And clearly what Lore Lodge experienced was a lot of what I experienced but he recorded it in real time, which went on to call, you know, mine unveiled a cunt, a motherfucker and all this other stuff, which to me was highly entertaining. But unfortunately, that kind of then steered that whole camp, the pro Tartaria camp into well, mine unveiled's response was really mature and adult like and Lore Lodges was the opposite. And I feel like that at that point closed down the conversation between the two of them. And then there really was no more response from Mind Unveiled because they had it in their head that they were the bigger person for how they behaved and just kind of stepped away. Yeah, and that's interesting as well because that whole interaction that you had with Mind Unveiled actually was the the cause of me and you falling out with a lot of people in that so-called Tartaria, Tartaria uh, community. Because Mind Unveiled had shared your correspondence with them and they started talking about it and reframing it. You know, when you said that sometimes the comments and the negativity is a bit much, sometimes it makes you want to feel like delete your channel. And they were using that as kind of leverage of why YouTube, YouTube had removed your channel. So that's an issue in the sense that, you know, if you're having behind the scenes conversations, you should have... As a big channel, you should have some assurance they're not going to share them around, I think, publicly. Yeah, it was a moment of vulnerability where I assumed I was speaking with someone that I could create a bridge with and kind of fix some of the animosity that was going back and forth between myself and, and some of the Tartaria crowd. 
Yeah, I mean, some of these guys, when they have their moment of vulnerability, they just like cry in live streams where I'm just like, yo, I feel like deleting my channel because this isn't even worth it because this isn't criticism. This is toxicity. This is the kind of like insults that cause the weaker the weaker influencers to like kill themselves and stuff because they do do that. There's been a lot of influencers that like commit suicide. Obviously, that's not going to happen with me, but it has just that venom and that mean spiritedness. And then to just pretend like I can't take criticism and that's why I want to delete my channel. It's like, no, it's because of people from your fandom that just ruin the whole entire experience. And to circle back to what you were saying about that private message being spread, when YouTube deleted my channel, it was like 24 hours of just feeling weird. Like, did that really happen? You're like wired to just naturally go onto YouTube studio and check your analytics and your comments. And you find yourself going to do that, but then you remember that you don't have a channel. And then the next day it was like, okay, you know what? Everything happens for a reason and that's that. But then the Tartaria crowd starts pushing this message that I deleted my own channel. And you're right, that's then when we started going after Campbell and that whole entire company. But we kept it within the research. But looking back, I can see how it came off as a threat to that Tartaria crowd that my channel was the one that went down, not one of theirs. Wooden Nichols. No warnings, no strikes, hit with a sex and nudity violation and just termination. So that leaked private message of me describing how I want to delete my channel and just walk away from YouTube, that became a beacon of light to Campbell because it was a narrative that they could push to save the grift. So I get it. I suppose we don't have any evidence that Mine and Val shared that with the intention of it getting out, but he shared it with someone, another content creator, Paul Cook, who then shared it because he didn't care about sharing it. He had no integrity there. So whatever happened, it's just a, an example of how of what shouldn't happen, really, when there was, you know, an interaction that was, was trying to build some kind of connection. You know, when I pivoted, when I changed my mind and publicly said I was wrong, there were very big channels like Mind Unvalve. Mind Unvalve was one of them that were going around telling other smaller channels not to talk to me and that I'm not trustworthy, that I can't be trusted, that I'm a shill. And he did that exact same thing with you. That's what he did. You know, when me and you, when he had realized me and you were hooking up and we were going to collaborate, he was messaging you saying, stay away from Ewa. And the thing is, you know, in hindsight, and as as time went on, I realized it, this was all to protect the business. I don't think it was personal. They, it can't be personal. They don't know me. This is one thing. None of them have really ever had any personal exchange with me apart from a couple of them. So I think it was all to protect the business that, you know, the big Tartaria channels are earning a lot of money from this. So it's a business, you know? And so it makes sense why they would want every single other channel to think I'm a shill or whatever, or I'm an agent and you can't trust him, so don't speak to him. Or, you know, if you speak to him, then we're cutting you and you ain't going to rise and you're not going to, you're not in the business anymore. That's kind of how this works. Because if it doesn't work that way, to have big channels going around telling people to stay away from me is, is very vindictive. Even though it's a business and even though, you know, I can understand it from the other side, I do have that empathy to understand, you know, you're making money, you got it going good, this prick's come along and, and ruining that, we're going to go against him. I do understand that, but I don't think it's entirely fair. And the results of it are still felt now. Because I came up as a Tataria channel, I'm still blacklisted. You know, I'm still not really growing as a channel. I still get smeared as a shill or this or that, an agent or whatever, and I never get shared out. And it kind of shows how much control is executed within the Tartaria community or how much control they have. It's almost like it does feel sometimes like it's a big club. And some of the people at the top that are not nece necessarily, you know, um, content creators, but they do have a degree of control and stuff. It does, it's very like complex, you know? and what was so annoying with Paul Cook stirring the pot by sharing that message of yours, you know, that message between you and Mind Unvowed, sharing it with Campbell and Campbell and co taking it out of context and talking about it. What was so annoying about that is that all they had to do, Paul, Campbell or whoever, is just get in touch with you. But then you got in touch with them and they deleted your comments. So it's like they wanted to smear you 
And they wanted to do that. They had to do that because they were threatened. Their business was threatened and they had to protect it. And that's why we ended up in that situation. Without that happening, that sharing of the correspondence, there would have been no situation, you know, between channels. Yeah, when I caught on to autodidactic slandering me, I left comments under his video and either him or his mods were deleting them. And then when I called him out for deleting my comments, they would leave that comment up to try to make me appear to be a crazy person or something. So I emailed autodidactic and I called him out for his bullshit of deleting my comments. And I asked him, do you want to squash this behind the scenes right here, right now? Or do you want to go public with a beef? Autodidactic never responded to the email and we kicked it off. And how did it all end? With us proving autodidactic was a liar and him striking the video to censor the damage. And and don't get me wrong, like I'm not still hung up on that. It's just that it's relevant to speak about it now. And, you know, I even got in touch with Paul later down the line. You know, when a big portion of the community turned on him because of his behavior. You know, I, I did kind of pity him a little. So, you know, I got in touch and I said, You've you've actually got to stop engaging. You know, like he was literally walking off a cliff with that because he kept engaging with this, with this like really heated drama in like the worst way possible. And, you know, and I said to him, like, no one cares, man, about your sex life. Like literally who cares? Like no one cares that you got a, you know, during a live stream, like your audience is there for the content. They don't care about that. You know, forget it. Like, it's not a big deal. You have to stop engaging. That's what I said. And, you know, if I'm honest, you know, looking back now, some times past, I don't think he actually deserved that kind of support from me. Because from the beginning, all he cared about was continuing to make money with this Tartaria grift and not going after the truth and being honest with it. You know, and as a result, because of that, they smeared you in the most dishonest way you know what I mean? Like by sharing that private correspondence, which should never have made it out of a you know a direct messages inbox, by sharing that around. Yeah, that's it. It's always been you know their shields, and and I bet you know, and I'm saying it now because I'm already kind of getting a sense and starting to see it. But I bet they end up speaking about similar things that I'm presenting in this labyrinth series. You know, because it is hidden history, and it does ver you know explore the kind of the occult, the hidden, and certain themes and stuff. And I bet they do that. And when they do that, I'm going to be there, and I'm going to speak about it, and I'm going to point it out. Because another channel did it, Conspiracy RS. He tried it with a similar video. He made a similar video to the Ships of Heaven. And I got in touch, or tried to, and I was actually encouraging to him and said, you know, this is good. You know, if you want to hook up, um, you know, share some information and talk about this topic, happy. And they deleted my comments because again, you cannot, you can't, I'm blacklisted. It's like, no, 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 no. So everything they do is to protect their business on this site. But if you're going to start integrating ideas of the person or the people that you've called a shill and demonize, then it's hypocrisy and it needs calling out. It doesn't work that way. You know, just in the same way that you you cannot you can't demonize Law Lodge as a Freemason and then draw on Higgins to support your nonsense. It's hypocrisy. And it's that very hypocrisy that you are claiming to fight with the mainstream media. It's worse in a way. Because it's worse because you call yourself truthers. What in tarnations is going on?